the Files. You're with the Sattler Files. My name is Murray Corf, and joining me is Gavin Simpson, former religion writer for the West Australian. G'day, Gavin. Murray, how are you going? Well, thank you. Welcome Good. along. And thank you. We talk about all sorts of things, uh, spiritual, religious, and, and all of that sort of stuff. But we're going to talk about something a little bit different today. We're talking about non-believers, atheists, mm. and, uh, and the like, and how it impacts um, religion. Yes, the rise of the new atheism. Is We're, it new? Well, it's it's new in the sense that it's a fair bit more aggressive than atheism probably mm. used to be. Atheism, I always thought, was just somebody, uh, well, my impression of, of an atheist, was just somebody who was a non-believer, but that was it. They just didn't want any part of it. But well, now they're doing something to promote yeah. themselves. They become more evangelical these days, Um did they really? I've, I've, I find that really at odds with um, what I sort of uh, my sort of take on atheism right. is. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at people like Christopher Dawkins, uh, Richard Richard Dawkins, Richard sorry, Dawkins, Richard yeah, Dawkins, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right, Richard Dawkins, yeah, yeah. the scientist who's quite militant in his. Um, <clears throat> well, he's certainly very definite in his views, isn't he? And Gavin's going to have a little bit of a cough, and we haven't got a microphone switch to turn it off. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. He's um he's very definitely uh very uh, uh robust in his mm. point of view, isn't he? He is, and he's written um you know books like um God is oh, no no that was that was Christopher Hitchens who's the other who's now passed mm. away mm. who's the other great proponent of militant atheism um he wrote God is not great and uh, other books like that. Um, he also made a name for himself by getting stuck into Mother Teresa, which is sort of like yes, that was probably uh, probably unwise. Unwise, yes. But he stuck to his guns, mm. and, um, yeah, and said some pretty amazing things about her. Um, and Richard Dawkins um, has lots of TV programs, and he's always arguing for um, science based mm. um, view of the world and stuff. He Richard. is, yeah. Um, and between them, they probably, you know, have been fairly influential, I would think. Mm. Um, and it's a, it is a change from, as, as you were saying, a, atheism before was sort of a quiet kind of process, I guess, where people didn't really try to convert other people so much. Well, probably in years gone by, uh, religion was something that everybody participated in. Mm. And if you were an atheist or a non-believer, then you were considered... Uh, uh, perhaps an undesirable, as yeah. it were, because clearly, if you didn't believe, then you didn't have any values at all. No, that's right, and you were sort of an outcast. Yeah. Mm. So interesting, even in the American election this this time around, we've got Bernie Sanders, who's not very religious at all. Mm. Uh, he's Jewish, and but he really doesn't practice Judaism, and yet he's that doesn't seem to bother people anymore. Once it really would have in America, if you absolutely weren't. right, and you know it was uh, if. If you weren't seen as uh, being um, well, almost devout, mm. you were not considered a possibility for a presidency. No. But that's all changed now, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, has. Yeah, it's never been the case in Australia. We seem to have not really cared whether prime ministers were religious but, or not. But they still persist in um, being a little bit overt about their their faith, don't they? A lot of um, them do. I mean, Scott Morrison, uh, not not that he's a prime minister, but he's certainly come out and, you know, um, uh, made made everybody aware that he is mm. def very definitely a Christian. I mean, yes. Tony Abbott was uh, went into uh, he was going to be a priest, wasn't he? He was. Yes, he spent um, years in the seminary. Kevin Rudd. Uh, yes. Was another one. He uh, John Howard, although he wasn't overt so much, but he often no. got photographed coming out of church on a Sunday morning. So, you know, they do they do try and do that. Yeah, and and they do have that sort of prayer breakfast group, or whatever it is, in in the Parliament mm. that, they, that they belong to. Um, I thought, you know, Kevin Rudd. I thought was really wore his heart in his sleeve a bit much. I thought he was often would have press conferences. Going to church on a Sunday, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a little bit much. I thought. Well, look, I think faith, whether you believe or you don't believe, is something I I believe anyway. Is not anybody's, uh, not certainly not the electorate's business. No, I don't think so either. No. Julia Gillard copped a baking because she, <laughs> she professed did. her atheism, didn't she? Yes, she did, and that was just um, seen as one more example of uh, 
her being out of touch and yeah, and why she and, shouldn't be prime minister? Why she shouldn't be prime minister? Yeah, that and the empty fruit bowl in her kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. In fact, she hadn't had children. Yeah. I mean, that to me, that's just a touch, you know, uh, off the wall. Mm. I, I I don't think that um, anybody should necessarily be pilloried for for not believing, and and I don't think they should necessarily be lauded for believing. I mean, no. that, that seems to me to be a bit paradoxical. Yeah. It was funny, isn't it? You compare her to, to Bob Hawke, who, while he wasn't an atheist, he certainly was an agnostic. Mm. And everyone just accepted that. I mean, it was part of his knockabout sort of larrigan character. Mm. And no one ever made, it, made an issue of that. Um, no, a, they didn't. Um, and it's quite quite remarkable that uh, so much was made of Julia Gillard's mm. Uh, mm. Uh, atheism, yeah. which, um, I mean, I found, to be honest with you, I just found that really distasteful. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, you know, just, you're entitled to your beliefs or non-beliefs, absolutely. as it were. Yeah, and you were saying off air before we came on that they're building a temple to atheism well, in, in London. Is that right? No, we got they wanted to. There was they a, wanted to. Okay, yes, sorry, it didn't ever ha- actually happen. But there was a um, a, a guy who was um, an a, a atheist philosopher who actually was who was doing it sort of as a, a protest against, or the idea was a protest against militant atheism of the sort being preached by. Dawkins and Co. Um, he wanted to show that atheism was um, kind of not anti-religion, mm. um, and had but it had just as much right as religion to exist. And mm. his idea was that they would build this temple where people who have no belief yep. could come, and they mm. wouldn't feel threatened if you go to a, like a cathedral. You'd feel a bit of, like a fish out of water if you didn't mm. believe. Mm. Um, but they could get the same sense of awe and wonder mm. by going to a, a temple dedicated to um, to good things and um, and to the power of the universe and all that sort of thing where you could mm. just sit there and say, life is good. Mm. Um, it didn't ever happen, but it was an interesting idea. Do you think Do you think Richard Dawkins is militant about his atheism? Yeah, yes, he is. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, in what way? Doubt. Oh, well, he's always arguing for it and he's, um, uh, you know, he, he's, he's very anti-religion um, and he sees himself as a crusader for... Rationalist thought against mm. the powers of you know bigotry and all that sort of thing. Look, uh, yeah, look, I I think that yeah he probably does on reflection. You know, I mean, he certainly argues his case. He does, and fairly, he does it very well, and he does it reasonably well. But yeah. it shouldn't be that he disparages people for having faith and and believing, should he? No, I don't know that he actually does that. Um, but he certainly disparages the idea of of. Um, a deity. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. sort of make it personal, though, I don't think. No. Um, well, he shouldn't because no. that's really, not, you know, when you, when, you, um, when you read what there is about atheism, they are the ones that are supposed to not be zealots and, yeah. you know, take extreme positions on anything, yeah. you know. I think they think that, um, that the, uh, the establishment is kind of, Got too much power, and and the church has got too much power, and and people of belief have got too much power um, compared to how much uh, people non belief have, mm. and they think that they're, they're out to write this. And there's also the, which I think is kind of fair enough, that the view that science really has got a bit of a battle mm. to, against um, the powers of religion mm. in many ways. Um, religion and science should be compatible, and religion, religious people often say that it is, mm. but then. You do get, I mean, you know, the, the movement today, uh, the anti-science movement is quite worrying, you know, mm. the anti-evolution people, and uh, especially mm. in America, although there's a little bit here as well, um, mm. who, who don't want evolution taught in schools and that sort of thing, and the creationist movement, which is, you know, mm. just just silly, that um, God created the world as, as the Bible said it said mm. he did, and all this, and they have, they have quite a powerful sway in America, that you know, about nearly half, well, I think at least half of Americans believe in creationism mm. and not, not not evolution. And evolution has had hard battle to really be accepted. As, and it's, it's the only thing that, thing that makes things work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, it, it is interesting, isn't it, that um, something that we really can't determine one way or the other. I yes. mean, science does its best, but yes. it hasn't actually got there. <laughs> No, really, and it really is just a question of your belief. Now, really, uh, if we start get if the creationists and the uh, and so on start to get um, more militant, 
I mean, I, I would find that really disturbing. Yes, yes, and, uh, and some of them are quite militant. Uh, mm. I think it's disturbing as well. Um, and it's, it, it is so interesting that, that science has opened up this whole kind of new vista of, of, of how things could have come about, and how mm. the universe could have been created, and that it could actually have come out of, just popped up out of nothing. Mm. Um, and while these, these theories are, not, uh, are just theories, mm. and they don't absolutely tell us what goes on, um, in some ways they're probably... Well, they are just as credible as as, as the um, story of, of creation in, from the mm, Bible. Mm. Um, I mean, you have to put put a lot of belief in that. Um, but as you said, nothing's yet proved, so we still are in the dark, really. No, that's right. Mm. Um, do you think that uh, atheism is starting to impact on religion? Um, well, I think science is, and and science presents an atheistic view of the world, which is not. The majority of science, either by the way, mm. um, is certainly having an effect. I think, um, and because the other thing is that people don't really understand these theories that have come up, no, that, that show that the universe could come out of nothing, and and you know Hawking's view. What's the book he wrote? Um, oh yeah, I can't remember. The no, name I can't either. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's the most. It was one of the most popular books ever. Yeah, but no one's ever read it. I mean, no. People just give up because it's too hard. <laughs> That's right. But they, they, they. Think that they know and understand what science is talking about, but they don't really. And um, in many cases, and I, you know, I battle with it, of course, yeah, yeah, because it's so hard to to get your head around yeah. some of these theories. Yeah. Um, but it's it's easy for people to say, oh, well, you know, science has shown that um, we don't need God anymore because uh, don't need they don't need a creator. So, but they're not quite sure how that's been shown. Yeah, it, it is interesting, isn't it? Because people people have their faith and. That that and I think that that's if that's what you know if that supports them and it mm. and it uh, makes their life better and and all of that sort of stuff. Why do we need to know for sure one way or the other? Well, I think it's sounds- because faith is something that <laughs> yeah. is faith. I mean, it, it it's not something that you can sort of say. Well, I I have this faith because definitely creationism. Creation. I oh, can't say it now. Creationists have it right, mm. that and therefore I'm I'm right and my faith is right. But faith mm. doesn't work like that, does it? No, faith is really more experience based. I think that's mm. the most um, surveys show that that people believe because they've had an experience mm. that leads them to believe. Not not so much that they had an intellectual acceptance of you know of anything of creeds or belief or what the Bible says or anything like that. Mm. It's something that happens within them, and they feel they've, they've somehow been in contact with a higher being or a higher source of power, mm. and mm. this, you know, changes things for them. That's why most and people who go to church, they go for the experience, not really to go to agree to a set of beliefs every Sunday. No, but to go for the experience um, of, of worship and and companionship, I suppose. Well, there's that element of it too, but it's a mm. spiritual thing as well, isn't it? It is. Um, and then there is a theory that we're all hardwired, in fact, to to have this spiritual element in our lives that's in our genes and the way that our brains work. Mm. Um, and that could well be, I suppose, because um, there's an awful lot of people who do have that spiritual belief and, mm. it's, and it just doesn't come out of nowhere. Mm. Um, and that leads me on, I suppose, to the other thing, the, the, the growth of the atheistic church, mm. which has started off in London, called the Sunday Assembly Movement, mm. where people of no belief at or yeah, are trying to recreate church for people who, without belief, but who want still want the feeling of going to church in a way. So you go along there, and there's um, not hymns, but there's you sing songs, mm-hmm. popular songs, you sing along, and you have an uplifting sermon type thing, and you have lots of social interactions. So it's like going um, being in a church in a way, because one of the things that people do like about church is that the the form of social community that that is there. And so they try to create this as well. You can get that at a bowling club. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you do. Yes, you do. Um, So, but I mean, if you go to church, it's all about the sermons and, you know, it it tells, it supports your belief system. It supports Mm. the the presence or the uh, supports the existence of a deity uh, of whatever sort. And, but if you go... (laughs) If you're an atheistic church, mm. what are you supporting? Do you go there and get sermons about how there isn't a God? No, you get sermons about the principles of, of helping others. Oh, okay, okay. And the principles of, yeah, those sort of good 
good mm. um, motherhood sort of issues that mm. they talk about. So are they trying to say that just because atheists don't have a belief in a deity, mm. um, that they still can be good people? Of course, yes, and mm. I don't think anybody would really argue with that. Mm. Well, some I Well, some, some, some of the – well, back a few years, as we discussed at the yeah. beginning of this, people did – if you didn't go to church, you yeah. were you were really a, um, a a tainted person. I suppose you were, yeah. And it was it was kind of when well, it's very really interesting actually when you look back. I, was, I had a friend of mine as an Anglican priest, and I was looking at, back at his parish photos. And in the fifties and up to early sixties, there was like, people did yeah. There was big big groups of people in Sunday schools and youth groups. My and, word, there were, and I was yeah. in them. Oh, were you? Yeah, right. <laughs> my, my was compelled. And right. I, my mother and father made sure that I went to Sunday school. I had a right. religious upbringing. Yep. And that I, well, I was confirmed into the Anglican church. Yep. And, uh, but that was de rigueur. Back right. then, you, that was it. Right. And um, the way that it was, uh, well, the way that my dear mother uh Intimated was that if I didn't go, mm. there there would be consequences <laughs> of some the next. of some sort or another. Yeah. Um, you know, right. so yeah, it was definitely I was definitely part of that. Right. So there was a bit of guilt going on there as well. Was, oh yes, yeah. Right. Oh really? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And um, uh, and we were made to go to Sunday school. My right. sister and I every uh, every Sunday. Right. And, okay. um I had to go and get confirmed in the same church that my mother went to, right, in North Perth, St Hilda's Church, oh, yes, St. Hilda's, yeah. and um, I was confirmed there as well. So right. it was all. She had this strong belief that um, you know we needed to do that, yeah, um, and that was her upbringing yeah, yep. from her parents as well. So, right. so what? So what happened? What, what, why did it all fall away? Did it just not make sense anymore? Well, I found the demon drink. I think. <laughs> 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 no, look, I, I, I think it didn't make sense to me right. uh, in, in the end um, and I became, well, at least an agnostic, I think, yeah. um, if not an atheist. But, um, yeah, it just didn't make sense. Right. Um, and because my real bent was towards science, if you like, yeah. as opposed to uh, to other forms of of endeavour, um, yeah, I, I just couldn't see the reason. I couldn't see any evidence. I couldn't see anything. And so, did did the rituals were they did they ever provide any comfort? Did you did you miss them when you stopped going? No, no, I, no. I really didn't. I, I to be honest with you, I I struggled with the uh, the process of confirmation, right? Uh, because. Not only did I have to go to Sunday school, I had to go, and this was really, I thought, why is this happening? We used to have to go to the second part of the church service, right? not the first. And right, I okay. didn't know what went on in there. <laughs> right. uh, I guess it was the, the taking of the sacraments or whatever. And then after yeah. the second part of the service, then we would stay back and okay. we would take our confirmation lessons, which I really struggled with. Yeah, it was, probably, I, it was probably a bit boring, wasn't it? It it bored me to a standstill. Yeah. It, it really <laughs> did. Um, but you know, I mean, that was look. I did it because well, I had to do it. Basically, I was yeah. compelled to do it. Yeah. Um, my, that was my mother's wish, and my sister was the same. Right. My brother, who was born some eleven years after me, didn't have to go through that. She, oh, I think, really? I think she gave up. <laughs> she saw, she saw how little attention that my sister and I paid to our religious instruction yeah. at a later date, and yeah. decided that it wasn't worth the effort. I mean, at least uh-huh. I got religious instruction in school, you know, as yep. a um, in primary school. Oh right, mm. okay, from someone who came in. There was, yeah, there's a series of them right. used to come in and uh, yeah. do do their talks and uh, the. Um, some the Jewish kids, I can recall this. Jewish kids didn't have to, right? Not the religious instruction we had, which was generally either Presbyterian uh, or Anglican. Mm-hmm. I don't remember any Catholics, but I may it be wrong. Probably there. wouldn't have been because well, there might have been, but most Catholic kids went to Catholic schools. Mm. Oh, of Very course, few yeah, of them went to that's state right. Schools. They did too. You're quite in, right. In fact, it was considered quite shocking if you sent your kid to a state school and you were Catholic. That was mm. that wasn't a good thing to do at all. No. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because what the Jesuits say, used to say, "Give me a child until he's seven, I think it is, 
the age and they'll have them, we'll have them for life. Mm. But obviously that doesn't work because so many Catholics as Protestants as well Jeez, have gone to lot, yeah. yeah gone to church schools give it up from the moment they walk outside the door of, mm. the, of the school. Why do you think that is? Do you it's think it's an evidence based thing? I mean, in this day and age, we are we are taught. You know that evidence and and that is is the key to all of this. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. Yes, and we do get taught to, to question a lot more than, than we I think used we to. do. I yeah. think that's even part we of did it. as in our generation, obviously. I think yeah, we did as well. Yeah, um, and that was maybe we were the first to really start doing that. Yeah. Um, to question everything, mm. um, and to be encouraged to question everything. It became it became almost um, a requirement mm. to 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 question. Everything. Yeah, it did. It you did. Which is we not a bad ta- thing. It's we were thing. taught to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that basically there were those amongst us that, when I at, of my generation that really did. Though maybe the the early adopters, if you like, of questioning things. Yeah. Uh, decided that they couldn't see any benefit in this, in mm. uh, and they had no belief in an afterlife or anything. No. And I think also it's a lot of it was as you said, we brought you to a standstill. Well. A lot mm. of it was boring. It really was. Well, it was because it was, and and it was also extremely serious. Yes, it mm. was really serious. Yeah, and it um, was. I think kids started then wanting to have be have fun. Mm. Yeah, right. It was, and uh, yeah, fun was not a good thing. For, no, for a lot you of had to people. be really serious mm. about it. I mean, that's changed now, of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you get churches like the Hillsong Church yes, and things exactly. like that, I mean, they take a totally different yeah. view of things, and yeah. um, and maybe they've got they're onto something. I think that um, I was actually talking to uh, a, a lady that I I know um, yesterday. Uh, we were talking about her son's an Anglican minister. And he's got quite a good youth group, I think, of about 50-odd kids, uh, mm. which is quite good these days. Mm. And she said, well, part of it is because it is also all, all happy and, you know, and sing songs and have a good time and, mm. <clears throat> excuse me, and they, they enjoy it. So, you know, why not? I mean, religion should be enjoyed, you would, you would hope so. Look, I think so, and I think that's part of, you know, the sort of uh, what, what uh, really alienated me, if you like, mm. from it, because it, it wasn't fun. It no. Was, it was like... It was the impression that I got was that if I didn't do this, then I would be forever condemned yep. to purgatory yep. in some way or other. But I, I, I was watching a television program last night that I found really interesting, and that was about eight-year-old girls, um, or very young girls, right. with extraordinary anxiety conditions. Uh-huh. And it crossed my mind then that... In some ways, maybe faith has something to do with uh, ameliorating that yeah, condition. Well, not not in our day. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, but what I what I'm thinking about was the yeah. Hillsong Church. Oh, okay, and right. and churches of that nature where yeah. they do where it is a happy place. Yeah, and, true. And you are encouraged to sing, and you are encouraged mm. to have a good time, and it's mm. it's not all doom and gloom, and you you mm. know you must. Uh, uh, adhere to this, otherwise the consequences will be horrific. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe there's a bit, maybe there's something in that. Yeah. Well, I think even in the in the mainstream churches now, Catholic and Anglican, a lot of that hellfire fear element is gone. Mm. People are encouraged to be more, a lot more positive about mm. about things. So that is a good thing. Um, because, I mean, you used to go to church and they would play the organ. That was the only thing they ever played. And now you see guitars and yeah. and, and uh, all sorts of things yeah. uh, with their songs of praise and all mm. that sort of thing. I mean, it's a totally different sort of way they do things. It now. is. And I'm not sure. I mean, uh, it's good, I think. But I think there's the drawback of that is it turns religion into just entertainment. And if you're not entertaining, then people think, well, what's the point? So no gravitas there at all. No, and I think that's that's where people do go on the on the other side. I think mm-hmm. where it's all sort of fun and games and like going to a rock concert almost. <laughs> and um, I think that's no, that's not to my, in my view. My, yeah, that's not me. Yeah, yeah. But it obviously suits a lot of other people. And so, if it gets the young ones in, why not? Well, yeah, that's true. But it has to it has to have the foundation, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think church needed to evolve from what it was. When oh, yeah. When I was very young, it, mm. but um, do you think it's gone too far? Well, I think seeing some of those Pentecostal um, happy clappy things, uh, to in my view, it's gone a bit too happy far. Happy clappy, happy clappy. Yes. 
Um, as far as the other churches go, they that that's that probably hasn't gone too far. But um, I mean, there was when I was uh, in my twenties, there was the charismatic movement that swept the Catholic Church, and that was a Pentecostal type movement of people speaking in tongues and all that sort of thing. Mm, and, mm. and I never got into that. I just yeah, I just thought that was crazy to be honest. Mm. Um, but a lot of people did, and mm. it changed a lot of people's lives. So there mm. you go. Okay. But it's interesting. I was listening to an interview the other day. Um, with a young guy who had been on crystal meth and was um, had battled through that, and he's at the moment I think in he's in Asia now, um, and he was saying how uh, he'd come to Buddhism in Asia and he did you know changed his life around and given up crystal meth and all that sort of stuff, um, and he said that what he found appealing in Buddhism was that the the Buddha taught the value of um, suffering and that if you Desire causes suffering, and if you can take away the, the desire, you will take away the suffering in many cases. Mm. And he thought that was a very sensible proposition And because for him the, the big, huge desire in his life was to have another drug, another mm. fix of crystal meth. Yeah. yeah, and he said it was helped him see that that wasn't the only thing that needed to be done. And he was saying that the way the Western world has abandoned religious ritual in, for a lot of things has taken away the idea of, of um, that suffering is, is not such a bad thing necessarily and that having going without mm. can be a good thing. And he said, in, in this society, we don't we don't want to go without anything anymore. Mm. We want to have it all. And if you want something, I mean, it's, if you look at the ad commercial uh, on TV, uh, it's this phrase of you deserve it. Mm. Well, who does it? Why? Well, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve a new car or a new house. You know, who, who says you deserve it? That's you know? right, yeah. Yeah, no, quite, quite so. Yeah, yeah. It's just... But I mean, even so, I think the church still has some evolving to do uh, in in some ways. I mean, when you see on television, I mean, if you were somebody that hadn't seen it before, uh, where the the bishop or whoever is wandering down the aisle with the smoking lantern, I mean, <laughs> it, uh, it just doesn't sort of. There, there's an element in this day and age. There's an element of yeah. that of of really smoke and mirrors and sort yeah. of, uh, and that sort of thing. And I think. I think some of those rituals need to evolve from where they've been. I don't know. Been. I don't know about that because there's an awful lot of young people who actually really like that sort of ritual. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, you look at um, World Youth Day in the Catholic Church, mm. where when it was in Sydney, for example, when the Pope came, mm. and he was not the most charismatic Pope mm. um, <laughs> <laughs> by any means, and he certainly wouldn't. You wouldn't have expected him to appeal to the young, mm. but it was a huge success. There's, mm-hmm. you know, lots and lots of young people. Flocking to the events and you know, maybe, taking over Sydney. Maybe they are looking for something. Well, I think they probably are, and I think that sense of ritual and you know colour and movement has got its has got its place and its appeal. Can that be distilled down into faith? Do you think? Uh, well, it's a bit of theatre, you know. Yeah, people like a bit of theatre. Yeah, and, uh, and but they, I mean, if your faith says ritual to be faithful or to uh, embrace that faith, there has to be some ritual in there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe that's what they're looking for. Maybe because uh, because uh, obviously a lot of people don't have ritual and uh, mm. and they're just as uh, devout. So uh, in some of the some religions. So but the, in a lot of religions still ritual is a big part. Mm. And I think it. I think there is some need in in human nature for for ritual. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe when it's not done properly or done well, mm. then then it turns people off. And I'm sure it does. Mm. You can go to some churches and get you know. Bored out of your brain. Um. <laughs> well, I used to find um, that sermons left me. Oh yeah, I used to, they used to send me to sleep because yeah. a lot of it was not very well delivered. No. and it as a young person, it spoke way above my head. Yeah, I did not understand it. Yeah, and I couldn't make the connection, and it just was a whole lot of talking yeah. with absolutely no meaning yeah. to me well, as a young person. Oh yeah, well I think that still happens. I mean, I've gone Do to you? churches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sermons are often boring or boring or just irrelevant, mm. and um, they're not the. Well, I suppose for Catholics, sermons weren't really the main thing in when you went to church. That was just something you put no. up with, really. Mm. Um, the, <laughs> something you put up yeah, well, there. Were, whereas the Protestants had much more emphasis on the Word of God and yes. and preaching the Word of God, whereas Catholics had more um, emphasis on the sacramental part of what was going yes. on. Yes, yeah, quite right. And the sermons weren't so important, but you still had to endure them. Mm. You still had to sit there and listen to them. Yes. And often they were just, as you said, you know, 
Just yeah, horrible. meaningless. And, meaningless. And, yeah. well, to me, as I said, as a young person, way above my head mm. and way above my ability to understand. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, uh, and I think, you know, looking back on it, uh, that was a lot of what it was all about. I didn't understand. Right. And it wasn't Sunday school, wasn't like a school, a traditional, uh, you know, an academic school yeah. where you could actually ask a question or two. Yeah. They, they, they didn't lean, seem to like you doing that <laughs> because they thought their explanation, you know, was quite sufficient and yeah. you shouldn't be asking questions, you should just accept. Exactly. Yes, and I'm was not thing. sure that I was, I was in, into that. No, no, nor a lot of other young people I wouldn't have thought. But that was the thing, you had to accept, accept yeah. things. Yeah. Gavin, it's been a fascinating discussion, as always. Yes, it's been <laughs> I fun. really enjoyed this. <laughs> Good. And we look forward to catching up with you again really soon. Good. Thank uh, you, Murray. We'll, it was fun. Thank you. More on the Sattler Files very shortly. This is the Sattler Files.